Okay. Welcome to our One World uh, encounter, Energy Encounter with the Zohar. We are at verse 14 of Emor, which is page 105 in my volume 16. Um, let's invite in the Rav and Karen Michael, Rabbi Shlag, Rabbi Brandwein, the Ariya Kodesh, the Ramchal, Rabbi Tafon, Rabbi Mazulai, Rabbi Nachman Mendel of Ateps, Rabbi Kolon, Rabbi Shapir, Pia Setzna, the Baal Shem Tov, Rabbi Shirin Bar Yechai, and all the students, Rabbi Mordechai of Chernobyl, one soul with the Yosef of Tzadik and Shechem. We also have the assistance of the Tana, Rabbi Meir Balhanes, who literally means the master of the miracle. So as our teachers explained, uh, one of the things that we can do is, first of all, light a candle to connect to the soul of that tzaddik. Um, we also can ask the mayor of Balanes for help, and we should ask him for help, because he was known to perform miracles. So what, 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 what some people do is they say his name three times and say amen three times, and then ask for help. So uh, it would be... Rabbi Meir Balanes, Rabbi Meir Balanes, Rabbi Meir Balanes, Amen, Amen, Amen. And then think about what area in our life or the lives of the people around us where, where help is needed, where healing is needed, where support is needed, where um, any kind of fulfillment is needed, um, any kind of healing is needed. So let's have that in mind as we connect to these verses. It's also known uh, a day known as Pesach Sheni, which literally means the second Passover. So today we also have the opportunity to connect to the energy of Passover, um, which on a certain level is connecting to, to certainty and also the, the removal of ego. So if you have any matzah, it's a good day to uh, take a bite uh, with a consciousness of, it's, it's, not, it's not a cracker today. Today, again, it is supernal matzah. And so we have the opportunity to connect to the window in time today mirrors the window in time of, of Passover itself. Um, it's also the 29th, 29th day of the Omer, which is the first day of the fifth week. So the first week was Chesed, then Gevurah, then Tiferet, then Netzach, then Hod. So this is Chesed of Hod, mercy, unconditional love within our intuition, our Ruach HaKodesh, our ability to see a deeper reality. So we also have that assistance today. Okay, with that, um, let's dive in. Um, Raya Mahamana, Pikuda Dalis Sadra Kana Bechol Yoma Butzinim Bebe Makdusha Bahaukimna Raza Dimenorah Lakavel Nihiro di Yehuda, train zimnin, carbana bechol yoma, train zimnin, bechola eats tarich. Raya Mehayamana. The father. So, yeah, that means the faithful shepherd. Anyone want to take a guess as to who the faithful shepherd is? I should know that. That's okay. Um, it's the, the ultimate shepherd. The children of Israel being his sheep. Moses? Desert. Yeah, Moses. Very Thank good. you. Yeah, it is. It's Raya, uh, Raya Muhammad is a reference to Moses. Now, as we know, our, our understanding is that Rabbi Shimon Bayachai, whose anniversary, anniversary of ele elevation is next Monday night, Tuesday, which is the 33rd day of the Omer, hence Lag Omer, Lamed Gimel. He chose to elevate on the 33rd day. So, you know, we are in a week of Emor. That's this week's portion. But as we count the Omer, we're actually in the fifth week, the week that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai elevated from the physical reality. So also 
consider that there's a huge connection between Moses and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So we have that connection right here, right now, because that's happening Monday night, Tuesday. And so it's a reminder, a programming note, that there's a worldwide streaming event available to us Monday night, Tuesday, I believe starting at, I think, central time around four o'clock, so maybe five o'clock Eastern. And there are people will be tuning in from all over the world, but it's going to be starting in Israel. So for all I know, they'll be at the, they'll be in Sfat, um, they'll be in Meron. I don't think they'll be in Meron, actually. Meron is an actual, which is where Rabbi Shemar is buried, is a huge mob scene. <laughs> so I don't think our, 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 our teachers will be there. But they oh, yeah, there was a stampede there last year, I think. Yeah, no, there's stampedes there. There was a, there was a whole like you know st a stadium seating that collapsed. There's all crazy things go on because for a lot of people it's a huge day. I never understood why we lit bonfires <laughs> on Lag Bomer. Why, why would we light a bonfire? But if you read the Zohar of Haz, the, of the portion of Hazinu, it tells the story of the day that. Rabbi Shem Baruchai left the physical reality. And we read that on Lag Bomer because we're connecting to the soul of Rabbi Shem Baruchai, the author of the Zohar, the, 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 the greatest Kabbalist perhaps of all time, as the author of the Zohar. And so we read when he elevated from the world. And what we're taught, and this goes for every righteous soul, the day they chose to elevate is the day when all the light that they revealed is revealed. I actually saw something, uh, a scientific report, that people experience a heightened level of consciousness as they're about to pass. I saw it in yesterday's news. Like, there's an effusion of tremendous consciousness, which reminds me of the movie with Bill Murray, where he says, uh, he says something like the Dalai Lama promised him total consciousness, but uh, when he passes away, like I have a random, it's a random like line of comedy, but it's, but science actually is backing that up. But from a Kabbalistic perspective, all the light that we reveal in our lifetime returns on our day, on our day that we elevate. And that light returns every year on that day. That's why the, the death anniversary the day, the anniversary of elevation of a righteous soul is a day we always recognize. So like today it's Mayor Balaness, so many people will, will light candles to connect to that soul or we'll study something that they wrote. So again, on on, on Monday night, Tuesday, Lag Bomer, we read the Zohar. We read the Zohar every day, but it's, it's, a, it's even more so a connection to um, all the blessings available to us in the Zohar on the day that the author of the Zohar, Bishim Baruchai, chose to elevate. Anyhow, in the narrative about the day he elevated, he is his house is surrounded by fire. It's a physical manifestation of all the light that he revealed in his lifetime. I assume that's where the idea of lighting bonfires comes from, on Lag Bomer. But we don't need to light the bonfire. We don't. A lot of people do. We don't need to do a lot. We, we need to connect to the light. And the way we connect to the light is what is the energy that's embedded. It's the inner energy of the Zohar. It's the teachings of Rabbi Shemar Chai. It's all that wisdom. It's all that light that returns in full force on the 33rd day of the Omer. It also happens to be Hod of Hod. It's the fifth day of the fifth week. So if you look at Hod as this channel for deep insight, clairvoyance, Ruach HaKodesh, prophecy, and it's hode of hode is like the deep insight of the deep insight. It's like doubling down on, 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 on intuition, on deep insight, on clairvoyance. That's what that day, that's the day Rabbi Shem Yechai chose to elevate. Because for him, he was a channel for opening minds up to the, the reality that this is an illusion, what we're experiencing. It's a good illusion. It's good enough to look real, but reality is beyond this curtain that we are encountering on a 24-7 basis. Okay. Any questions? 
So in, in terms of this, this relationship between our world, this physical world, and the deeper reality, we have this idea that, hey, they used to light a menorah, a candelabra, in the temple. Where they needed, they needed light? Is that what it was about? Just like candlelight? So let's, let's read on, Maria. The priest is commanded to daily arrange lamps in the temple. Okay, so why the priest? Why not the late Levites? Why not the head of the tribes? Why not the governors of the land? Why not the children? Why the priests? What is it about the priests that they merit to light the candles? Well, what is the candles? What are the candles? What is the menorah? Is it just like an icon? You know, it's actually on the seal of uh, the state of Israel, the modern day state of Israel. What, what is that? What is that with, and, and let's make a distinction. The candelabra we're talking about is a seven stem candelabra. Three, three on each side and one in the middle. So it's six plus one. The Hanukkah menorah, which we refer to as a Hanukkah, the Hanukkah menorah is four, four, and one. It's eight plus one. It's nine. It's not the same one. Yes, Roshan. Yeah, quick question. Um, there was, I have a, a counting of the Omer. Yes, exactly that. Um, but I have the publication that was put out by the center in 2010, I think. And it's got the menorah and a whole series of prayers that go with it. A whole series of? Of like names and prayers. The whole thing is decorated with all these names and prayers. And it says something about, does anybody actually know what they're doing with that or so do anything with it? You see, can, I'm going to try and get yeah, yeah. You see the words that are in there? Right. Okay. So if you look in your connection books, you'll see on the page before that is a... I can't, the, the number isn't on this. Oh, here, wait a second, it is. No, it's not. Um, it is one of the Psalms. Which Psalm is it? Let me see if I can figure it out real quickly. So what, what it is, it's a Psalm with, you ready? 49 words. So each of the days of the counting, there is a word that connects to the internal energy of that day. And in the list in our connection books of, of the, the list of the days, it says above it, what word is the 49th word in case you can't count them all. Okay. Got it? Um, I got a better idea. Thank you. Additionally, the middle stem, that one, the middle stem has 49 letters. So there's a letter in the middle stem that also corresponds to the day. And here's another one for you. There's a word of Anabakoach. Now, wait a second. You're saying Anabakoach, that is seven lines with six words is 42. That's not 49. But we count the letters themselves as the seven. So, <laughs> so there are 49 words to focus on also that give us the inner energy of that day of the counting of the Omer. So when we're counting the Omer, there's extra opportunities to connect to the internal energy of the day. Again, today is Chesed of Hod as the 29th day, the first day of the fifth week. Got that, Maria? I yes. The idea better. So, yes. I just, Thanks. I just want to, I just want to clarify and just make sure I heard you correct. So, during the Omer, forty days, forty nine days, forty nine days, we're using this candelabra that has the seven, three and three in the 
And then during Hanukkah, we use the one that you has nine. Is that what I heard you saying? Yes, seven and nine. That is correct. So what is the difference of the two of the additional two during Hanukkah? What are we? Well, Hanukkah is a very good question. Hanukkah is really eight days. So there's one stem for each day. Uh -huh. And Got that's it. a connection to Bina, the eighth Svira from counting up. That's part of what's available to us. We're connecting to Hanukkah was a miracle. We're connecting to the energy of miracles. The realm of miracles is Bina. We already connected to that during the Seder of Passover. We're now marching back towards earning what we connected to at Passover. And, and so, guess what? When we get to the 49th, the last day of the Omer, that night is 50. And that's the 50 gates of Bina. So we reconnect to Bina. That is when Moses ascended Mount Sinai for the revelation event of immortality. All makes sense. <laughs> it's all linked it's all connected these windows in time assist us in connecting to the light that before the tsum was everywhere but after the tsum after the great restriction we live in a world with fragmented light we live in a, a world of empty vessels we are trying to fill those vessels we're trying to create vessels and infuse vessels with life in the upper realm. And different windows of time give us different opportunities to do that. Today, again, we're connecting to the energy of Passover because it's Pesach Sheni, the second Passover. And throughout the days of the Omer, we are ascending to get to the 50th level where we connect to Bina, where we connect to the holiday of Shavuot, which literally is translated as Feast of Weeks. What weeks? The seven weeks we just counted. It's the finish line, 50, Bina. Any questions about, any more questions about that? It's so nice when things add up, right? Like this is us in really, you could go through all these things and it just looks like haphazard and chaotic, haphazard and chaotic. There are plenty of people that are doing the stuff and going through the motions and it's, it's like kind of it's a cap happen. They don't understand how it all fits together. Well, isn't it a, a case of like religion? You know, like you can simplify it and ignore things, or you can look at it and say, okay, maybe I don't have time to do this every day, but I understand the principle of it, that there's an actual rationale behind it. Well, that's sort a of. whole, I mean, that's a conversation about, you know, traditionally the difference between. Hasidim and Mitnagdim. Like the Hasidim, it's from Chesed. It's mercy. The Hasidim are, you know, are, 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 who, are this, who are followers of the Baal Shem Tov, which we are, focus on leading with the heart, on coming from a place of unconditional love. That's Chesed. That's mercy. And when you, that's one approach. On the other hand, we have all these rituals that are tied into these windows in time. So our heart needs to be in the right place, but we also have to do actions. This is the world of action. So, so long as our heart's in the right place and it, it informs the actions we're taking, we generate all kinds of light. That's where we're coming from. But if you're just coming from a place of heart, that's great but it's not as effective. If you're just coming from a place of, I need to do the rituals and the reasons behind them are important, it's also great, but it's, it's limited. We're, we represent this, the importance of linkage of those two sides, of those two aspects. I'm not only doing things, but connecting to the internal energy, the consciousness behind them, the kavana behind everything. When we take actions, generally speaking, we always ask, why am I doing this? Why am I going to work again? Oh, yeah, I got to pay my bills. Why am I taking out the garbage? Oh, yeah, I don't want garbage accumulating in my house. Why do I floss? I want to keep my teeth. I mean, there's a reason for everything. If you don't understand the reason, you're not going to do it. Hence, 
things fall by the wayside when people don't understand. And it's not just understanding. We're not talking about paying our bills here. We are a certain level. We're talking about manifesting light from the upper realm, light of fulfillment, light of protection, light of healing, light of understanding, light of treating everyone with human decency, light of avat, of love, of, of, of unconditional love, of ahabat chinam, unconditional love, as opposed to sinat chinam, baseless hatred, which is the reason why it's, it says in our writings that the temples were destroyed. The Zohar's that we've been connecting to on Monday through Thursday of this week. But here we are lighting the candles, lighting the manure, and it's the priest that has to do it. Why? I mean, he, you know, that's what priests do. <laughs> Can it be, is it that simple? Is it because that's what they do? Why, why is it that they do it? There's there's a there's a there's a passages I, I don't know which portion it's in it may be this week I don't I don't recall now where everyone is bringing sacrifices and Aaron's upset because he's not on the list of sac people bringing sacrifices and Moses and God says Moses tell him don't worry I gotta I gotta think for him to do he's gonna light the menorah in the temple that's how significant this is it's not just light. So people don't trip on the steps. That's important too. It's not light so we don't trip on the steps. It's light so we don't we don't trip up on life. And the priest is uniquely qualified to do that. We all have roles. We all have roles. Every single one of us is here for a different reason. Part of our journey is to figure out what that reason is. We, no two of us has the same reason or it would be duplication. There's no duplication. So part of what we're gaining from this section and this connection to the role of the priest is understanding our role, what we're here to do. Right now, what we're here to do is channel energy of light to the world by connecting to the Zohar. From wherever we are, we are channeling light to the whole world. And we're the only ones who could do it. Why? Are we really? Well, we're the only ones doing it right now, here, in this context. So, the, the, you know, don't question, like, am I doing, am I here doing the right? No, you're here doing the right thing. Whether you were watching this live or we're listening to it later, we're still channeling that energy from the upper realm. And this is precisely what we need to be doing right now. Because I have the same things going on. I'm busy at work and whatever. And I'm like, oh, it's time to study the Zohar. It's not like the Zohar is in the way. It's the work is in the way. We got to do the work. We always have to be doing that work. But we always also have to carve out the time to channel that energy. Because it is up to us to do that. Okay. And it's up to the priest to light the lights. There's something about the priest, a unique energy of the priest that was required to light the lights. The priest was uniquely qualified to light the lights. Let's see if we can figure out what that, that unique qualification is. Keep going. Okay. We have explained in this relation, we have explained, I'm sorry, explained this in relation to the candelabra. Okay, so the reason that the priest is lighting the candelabra has something to do with the candelabra. Go ahead. This secret is in the likeness of above, since the supernal light in the anointing oil first runs over the head of the supernal priest, which is the first three sephirot of Zerampin. Okay, so... The secret is, a is in the likeness of above. The secret is a reflection of the upper realm. Mm -hmm. 
what does it mean, the supernal oil? First of all, the menorah that we light is we're lighting oil. What is it about oil? Why is it oil that we're lighting? Why isn't wax in this context sufficient? A lot of times we do use wax. Wax essentially is just hardened oil. But what, what is it about oil? There is, you know, think about for a second, what is a candle? Candlelight exhibits, and we've talked about this, but it merits thinking about it again. Candlelight has attributes that work in opposition to nature. Nature, one of the most powerful forces in nature is gravity. I mean, gravity holds on to everything. The planet has gravity. It's desire to receive for the self. That's what gravity is. It's like our own gravitas, <laughs> our own gravity. It's like the things that we want, that we need, that we receive, which again, that's what Kabbalah means, to receive. It's understanding that just like there's a gravity to the planet, we as individuals have gravity also. We have a desire to receive for the self. Candlelight burns up. So one of the features of, of, of a flame is, it, is it, it works opposite of gravity. Gravity doesn't keep a candle going down. Candlelight and fire, for that matter, goes up. So it, it, it exhibits properties that are above and beyond what nature is. And that's what we're always trying to do. We're always trying to rise above our nature, our desire to receive the self. There isn't any other species on the planet that does that. It's, it, it's our unique ability to rise above our desire to receive the self. That desire to receive the self is part of body consciousness. It's not your soul's consciousness. It's body consciousness. So when your soul wraps itself up in this body to be here in this physicality to do work, we are connected to desire to receive the self. That's body consciousness. Soul consciousness is the desire to receive the sake of sharing. So we're always trying to overcome a desire to receive for the self in favor of using that desire to receive for the sake of sharing. And that's also what a candle does. I mean, you fill up the stem or the holder on the stem with oil. You put a wick in it. And the wick essentially is drawing that oil to feed the flame. Again, moving opposite to gravity. Oil would be flowing down, but oil actually flows up to feed the flame. I mean, think about what is a flame? You can't pick it up and put it in your pocket. It's, is it physical? At least with water, I can't put that in my pocket. I can freeze it in an ice cube, put that in my pocket. I can take it with me. But what about, what about a flame? I can take oxygen with me. I can put it in a tank. I can take, so, I mean, you know, the four elements, air, water, earth, and fire. The other three I can take with me. How do I take fire with me? I mean, it's kind of its own thing, and it's very unstable. But it represents this inflection point which takes a physical object, any physical object that can, that can catch flames and just, it doesn't, it doesn't destroy it, it just changes its form. It changes its function. It turns water into hot water to cook. It turns water into steam. It turns firewood into heat, more heat. It, it, it's different. And it exhibits properties that are different. And by observing that, by having a conscious of that, we are, again, taking our conscience to the upper realm. We're, we're, we're going beyond our nature. We're going beyond just going through things without thinking about it. Just, just going according to our nature. Let's continue. 
then he then he kindles the lamp, namely the sephirot of the sephirot of Mahut, the illuminations of fire, and makes them illuminate as it is written. It is like the precious ointment, sorry, upon the head, and the anointing oil of his Elohim is upon him. Okay, so what does the the candelabra represent? The lighting of the lamps, as the Zohar says, and Rabbi Shlag adds, is the sefirot of Malchut, the illuminations of fire. <clears throat> so this is why there are six and one, because the six represent the, the sefirot of Zerampin, chesed gavur teferet netzachod and yusof. And the seventh represents Malchut. So again, it's this connection between upper realm and lower realm. Malchut represents the spiritual realm that we occupy, which is empty, which because of the great restriction, all the light was removed. It shows up through really the 10 spherot, but specifically the six spherot that channel the light into Malchut, which has no, Malchut has no light of its own, literally has no light of its own. So that's the inside. That's why it's not just a candelabra. It's not just some kind of icon of day of far gone days. It's not just kind of like it's on the you know official seal of the state of Israel. No, 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 no. It represents our enlightenment, our understanding, and our ability to create a bridge for light from the upper realm to flow into our realm. It represents an understanding of beyond the chaos that we are encountering, and we are encountering chaos, that beyond that lies a deeper reality that we don't always merit to see. And the reason why the priest is uniquely suited for that is because the priests are connected to chesed. They're connected to mercy. That's what Aaron's dominant feature was. He was a man of peace. He was claiming peace between everybody. He was all about that unconditional love of chesed. <clears throat> okay, keep going. Thus, only the priest is permitted to arrange the lamps and light them twice a day to correspond to the illumination of unity that occurs twice, and the daily offering, which is the offered twice daily. All that is needed. Okay, so this was something that took place twice a day. And what they say about that particular psalm, which is, hang on a second. that is embedded within the menorah that's in our, our connection books. It's, it's verse 67 of Psalms. Okay, so again, it has 49 words, So there, and the middle stem has 49 letters. So those are opportunities that we have of every day of the counting of the Omer to connect to that unique energy of that day. But the other thing that we're taught is reading that I mean, you can read it like this, just as you know you would read any other psalm, or you can read it as it's embedded in the candelabra. And when you read it as embedded, in the by the way, you know, you 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 the words go down like you're not supposed to turn your head. You're supposed to know it well enough <laughs> that you can follow it in the outline of the candelabra. It's next level. When you do that, we're lighting the menorah. We are the ones lighting the menorah. And when we light that menorah, we are, that candelabra, we are opening up those channels just wait, like the priest. The priest can't isn't lighting that menorah now. At least the priest in the 
terrestrial realm, in our physical realm. That's us reading that, connecting to it. We do it. We have opportunities every day to do it. So as we land in that candelabra, and I don't have the book in front of me for reference, and maybe does reference, are we lighting it left to right, right to left? left yeah, we're, we're, lighting, we're reading the left stem first, correct. So it's the one in the left. Yeah, it's going, we're, we're, we're reading the left stem first, and, it's, and the words go down and make a little, you know, yes. Okay. Okay. That's what, and if you can't read the words, then, then scan them with that consciousness of creating a connection to the upper realm through the channels that we're provided with, with which are the six spirot, chesed, vut, ferret, netzach, and manifesting them into malchut. That's that's what is behind the candelabra. And, you know, and we want to come from a place of, we want to be thinking unconditional love. We want to be thinking about healing. We want to be thinking about all the fulfillment that, that we're looking to channel for the, we're doing it not for ourselves. It's desire to receive the sake of sharing. We're making this connection for the world and the people around us. Let's try one more. I'm not sure we'll get through it, but we definitely will be connecting to the, the energy within it. Okim na shemen ukatorat yisamach lev. Aol adkan raya mahavana. Go ahead, Marie. The candles are shining everywhere by means of the priest, above and below. Above and below. Well, like I light the candles and reflects off the ceiling, reflects off the floor. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in a physical, but that's not what it's referring to. It's referring to when we light that, we are creating the channels and the light throughout reality. Upper realm and our realm. Go ahead. So there will be rejoicing, and so that joy we abound in all directions, namely right and left, with the lighting of the lamps. Okay. Period. So, yeah. What does joy have to do with it? You can't force joy. So that's not what it's about. So where is the joy in doing this? And arguably, if you can't feel the joy, something may not be right. Because we're doing this so that above and below, so there will be rejoicing. And so that joy would abound in all directions. What is this? Like a birthday cake? Everyone gets really happy when we light the candles. We want to see someone blow out the candles. What, what is it? What is it? Well, isn't, isn't it that when we're connecting in our prayers, on our lighting, it's just... For us to receive it the same way that we receive, asking to receive that joy for so we also share with the world. Yes. Isn't that the job to yes. do our job? Absolutely. And and additionally, I mean, I'm gonna say it a little bit different. When you connect, when you know what you're doing is precisely what you're supposed to be doing. I don't have any fear, I don't have any uncertainty, I don't have, I know what I'm doing as what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm joyful. I have no reason to not be joyful. This is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And that creates alignment between your physical consciousness and your soul consciousness. When we are physically engaged in things that are channeling light into the world, for the world, when we're taking a desire to receive and transforming the desire to receive the sake of sharing, this is us as channels for the world. Not an opportunity for ego. It's not about us. But it is kind of about us because it's what we're doing. So this is an opportunity to connect to joy above and below. It's always joyful above. <laughs> it's down here where we lose track. It's, it's, but it's us internally connecting to the unconditional joy, which is in our hearts 24-7. But we lose the connection because of the distractions of physicality and the illusion that things aren't okay. It's all good. Even when it's not, it's all good. The light has your back. 
even when things aren't going, there's a when things don't go right, there's a message there. The light is assisting us. When we experience, I just listened to a podcast from Michael and Monica, one of one of um, their spiritually hungry podcasts a few months ago. But I just stumbled. It's like, what is the deal with uncertainty? It's an opportunity to grow your certainty. It's there to help you. Everybody experiences uncertainty. That uncertainty is assisting us in getting to our next level. I wake up to it. Wait a second, what am I doing? That's right. Now I figure it out. Now I know what I'm doing. And when so when there is this alignment between what we're here doing and our soul's purpose, it opens up all kinds of channels of joy, which we need to be present to, which we need to feel, which we need to make available to the world. Okay, keep going. For those two are performed by the priest so that joy would abound in every direction. The kindling of the lamps and incense. We have already explained that ointment and perfume incense rejoice the heart. So, <laughs> really? Yes. And so we need to be present to that joy and and um, this idea of rejoicing the heart, we need to be present to that as we connect in, the, in, 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 in ways that the world is dependent upon us to connect to. That is, at a certain level, our soul's journey and our soul's purpose. Okay, everybody, we're out of time. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Love you all. Have a, have a great Shabbat weekend shalom. and see you all soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, David. Bye-bye. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.